Hey guys, I'm Steve Good. When we come back, I'm going to do a jig. I know you're disappointed, but this is the jig I'm going to do. Uh, the other night, you know, I did that uh, prototype of a dowel cross-cutting jig for the scroll saw. And I've been playing around with it a few days, and I finally come up with uh, what I think is the finished product. And uh, just wanted to show you how I built it, and if you're interested in it, uh, it's such a simple project that uh, you shouldn't have any trouble making your own. Uh, but I did want to show you a couple of the features I added from uh, people who emailed me and said, hey, you ought to do this, you ought to do try this. So I've done a few things. Um, one is the cross-cut jig is the same as what I had the other day as far as it's a piece of wood. In this case, I've used some Baltic birch plywood, one half inch thick. I took a router and I routed a V groove about one inch. If you go from here to here, that's about one inch from the edge, the lead edge of the jig. And uh, that V groove is, of course, where your dowels are going to set. Um, I did go ahead and use uh, the paper uh, tape measure and again this is a right to left tape measure uh, I'll put a copy of this on the blog uh, right with this uh, video post and uh, I was going to buy one of the uh, uh, self sticking uh, tape measures that you can get online but for this jig they were just too expensive and this is going to work fine so uh, and if this ever wears out or goes bad I'll just print out another one and glue it on. I glued it on with spray adhesive and then I put a few coats of spray lacquer over it to try to you know give it a little durability so I think it's fine. Uh, the other thing I did is I added a uh, clamp to hold the outfeed of the cutoffs in place and this clamp and I'll show you when I get over to the scroll saw this is actually what I'm going to use as the uh, backstop and I'll show you how that works when we get over there. Uh, the one feature that I talked about the other day that I really wanted to add and uh, maybe I'll zoom in here just a little bit closer uh, hopefully you can get a better look here. I decided that the only way to make this jig last any period of time uh, was to reinforce this edge that the, the uh, scroll saw blade is going to contact with steel. Uh, so after I cut my V-groove, I cut this notch out, and I'll probably go ahead and make some plans. They, they'll probably be pretty light plans, but I'll go ahead and make some so you get an idea of where all these features are. Uh, but anyway, I cut a piece of steel uh, just using a Dremel tool, and uh, after I got it cut to the length I wanted, then I cut this V-notch in it with a grinder. Uh, so this edge where the scroll saw blade is going to run, it runs against steel. And when we get over to the scroll saw, I'll show you that that works pretty well. This uh, clamp over here, uh, what you do is if you need a, a, a stop, you can set this piece right here at the three inch mark if that's what you want to cut. Lock it down and now when we take our dowels, and we put our dowels in there, we've got a positive stop. We can make our cut and then move on. So those are the features of it. It's 12 inches long. I think it's four inches deep. Uh, these clamps you can get at Woodcraft. Uh, one thing I will say is neither of these clamps is really absolutely necessary to build the project. Um, I added them just because, you know, I was out here in the shop playing with it and I wanted to, you know, add a couple features to it. Uh, the only thing that I would say that to, to build this jig that you really need to do is have a router where you can put this v-groove in there with a v-groove bit and I think this piece of steel is actually uh, pretty important so you're going to have to work on being able to cut this piece of steel down and again I just used a Dremel tool and did it by hand. I put the notch in there partly with a Dremel tool but mostly with a grinder uh, uh, so you know it, it wasn't difficult. Uh, but this is important. So let's go over to the scroll saw and I'll show you how it works. I'm over here at my scroll saw now and I've got the jig set up and ready to use and the other day when I was showing the prototype on the video I mentioned that the blade might be better off if we used a spiral blade and I've actually found that since I've added this uh, steel guard right here that we don't really need that. Um, one thing I did forget to mention when I was uh, showing you over at the workbench is when I put this paper rule on I had to compensate for the thickness of this sheet of metal uh, so when you get ready to glue your paper on make sure you actually measure one inch over uh, from the edge the right edge of this metal and that's where you're going to place the one inch mark on the little rule.
So uh, make sure you do that. But anyway, back to the blade. I'm using just a number five scroll reverse blade. Um, with this metal on here, or the steel on here, it doesn't seem to matter which blade you use. So uh, just real quick, I'll take a uh, quarter inch dowel. And like I said, you really don't have to put any of these clamps on here. Uh, if you don't have them or you don't want to spend the money to do it, you can, for the most part, just take your dowel, push it up to the mark you want, start your saw, put a little tension against the metal and make your cut and you've got your one inch dowel cut. You can repeat that pretty accurately by then again just pushing your dowel up and making another cut. Um, but one thing is if you do have this hold down it does help keep that cut off in place and you know doesn't you don't have to put your hands right there. So when I put the hold down I can make that cut and you see we didn't have the same uh, jumping effect that we had without the hold down. And then of course you can pull your clamp up and slide it over and do your next cut. Okay, the other feature that I've added is a very simple stop block. And it's just simply a 5 16 inch uh, dowel rod that I tapered a little bit and I'll show you why in a minute. And let's say we want to do a 2 inch cut. You just bring your dowel rod up to the 2 inch mark on the rule, clamp it down, then we're ready to do repeated 2 inch dowel cuts. We just slide it up to the stop, put our clamp down, up against the metal, make our cut, pull the clamp up, take that one out, the next one up against the steel, and again we're getting perfect, uh, perfectly sized 2 inch dowels. Now if you're a toy maker you're going to understand why uh, this is uh, easy to you know, good to have because you do use a lot of dowels in making to uh, uh, toys. Uh, so that's all there really is to it. Very simple to use. Um, again, I didn't want to make this jig too expensive because this is not something that you do that often. Uh, but I do enjoy making jigs, so that's why I did this uh, also. Now let me show you a couple other things. Uh, that was a quarter inch dowel rod. The five sixteenth inch dowel rod fits in there uh, without moving anything on the clamp. You just make your cut, everything fits fine. You can go up to a three quarter, well this is a one inch dowel right here. And uh, it's a little bit harder because you have to, as you see, you can't get the, the dowel in there without moving this clamp. Uh, so to get this larger dowel in here, you actually have to unscrew it, screw this in a little bit so it's higher and move it out to its end point. And uh, you'll see how that works. I'm not gonna do it right now, but you, you can see pretty clearly that it just can't quite clear that clamp right there. So it's no big deal. We got room in the screw to take care of that. If you want to do very small dowels like this one eighth inch thick dowel, um, again when you put your clamp down it's so low that it doesn't clamp it and uh, you can shave this down to make it fit in the groove but that didn't seem worth it. So what I do is I just take a one quarter inch dowel, put it on top of it, clamp it down and again I'm ready to cut. Uh, so that seems to be the easiest way around that without getting too complicated and seems to work fine. Let's see, what else is there? Um, that's about it. I, I will go ahead and draw up some plans, some simple plans, and I'll put the tape measure in it so you can print that out. When you print it out, make absolutely certain that you print it out on you know, the correct size. Use your ruler and check it when you get done uh, because you won't always get an accurate print. Let's see, these clamps that you've got, these hold down clamps, you can buy them at Woodcraft and other online sources and I'll try to get you a source and I'll put that in the post uh, on the blog post with this video. And I'll put a link down in the, in the description below. So very simple jig to build. Uh, you just have to be a little careful. This hold down clamp needs to be up here to where if you're going to cut you know, one inch uh, dowels, it's got to be able to clamp it. If you're going to get less than a half of an inch, like down here, the clamp misses it, so you have to hold that by hand. So if you're going to cut very small pieces, which is rare, but if you do, you're going to have to not use the clamp. And again, like I said, I, I used this clamp before, I, or this jig even before I put these clamps on it. So you can do it. It's just, these are just a convenience is all they really are. So let's go back over to the workbench and we'll finish up. 
Just to wrap up, I'm just going to go back over this real quick just for a couple of things you need to pay attention to. Uh, before you start this project, you are going to need a router with a V-bit and to do this groove. Now you could do it, I did it on a router table because it's easier, but you could do it with a hand router and a guide. Uh, so that would be uh, one thing I would make sure you have is a good, a decent router that in a decent uh, V groove. Uh, you do want to have the ability to cut a piece of steel. In this case, this steel is 1 8 inch thick, and uh, I actually used the handle of a tool. It was uh, one of those little uh, wrenches that come with like um, Dremel tools and stuff, and I just cut the, the wrench part off and shaped it to what I needed. Uh, this groove that's cut in here has to be wide enough that you can get that steel in there and I use two part of five minute two part epoxy to put that steel on there and it's on there pretty secure so that won't be a problem. When you do epoxy this steel in here uh, it's okay if it sets a little bit proud of the top of the jig but you don't want it proud of the bottom or you'll scratch your table so when you do it set it down on a good flat surface and make sure this does not go below the bottom of the jig. Uh, you don't want that steel pushing against your table. Uh, let's see. Again, these clamps you can buy them at Woodcraft and there's other online uh, sources, so I'll get that in the link below and on the blog. And uh, I did go, originally when I did the prototype, I built it out of MDF. The uh, Baltic Birch plywood is much lighter. I made it considerably uh, less deep. Uh, it's only four inches. I think the one I had the other day was seven inches. So this is a much lighter jig, easy to, you know, just store it next to your scroll saw with no problem. So I think that's probably everything you need to know. I'll draw up a little set of plans for it just to give you the dimensions and everything and some uh, the tape measure and some sources for the clamps. And uh, if you want to give this a try, download the pattern. And uh, I think it's pretty handy. I'm Steve Good. Thanks for being here with me at the Scroll Saw Workshop. We'll see you next time.